Today I'm working on aging things and making them look less like they came from the craft store and more like they came from the 1930s. So I'm zooming in on the uh, section that I'm still working on, these um, bottles that are filling the two niches that I have. Um, so the bottom row of bottles has been aged and uh, have been sort of individualized and the top row is still pristine clean shiny glass so I'm hoping that you can see the difference between the two um, this vial is actually the same glass bottle as these two down here um, so and they look pretty different so I'm just going to talk about the things that I do to create this illusion of stuff that is old and that maybe um, uh, hasn't all been assembled on the same day. So, you know, some of these things may be less full or less, um, less shiny, less new looking than others. Because what I don't want is for this to look like I grabbed a bunch of bottles from the craft store, filled them with stuff, and glued them in. And they all look like they're nice and shiny and new, and they jumped into being on the same day. Um, that, to me, is a big fail. Um, at least for a piece like this where, you know, this is the photo that I'm using, which is from the 1930s, I think. Um, so I, you know, I want everything to look like it's, uh, uh, of the same world as my photo. So, uh, this is where my theater training comes in handy because, uh, I did a lot of this when I was in school, um, creating props for, um, plays and stuff and decorating sets, um, where you had to make stuff look like it belonged in the world that you were creating. So uh, let's start with some simple aging. Look at this lovely shiny glass bottle. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this cork into place. The way I do that is put a little bit of glue around the bottom of the cork, always on the bottom, because as I slide it in, I'm going to twirl it, and that will spread the glue around and keep it from oozing out the top. So even if I left this as is, nice and clean and no decoration on it, it would be fine. It doesn't look like it's glued at all. The next thing I'm going to do is take a little ink, and you can do this with any kind of ink. I'm using pigment chalk ink pads, um, but you can use distress inks or whatever you want. I've even seen people do stuff like this with real dirt, and it works. Um, so I'm just aging up the cork a little bit so that it doesn't look so brand new. And I do usually let the glue dry before I start in on stuff like this, but because I'm filming it, I'm not going to. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blast this bottle with a little hairspray. And I'm going to do that off camera because the hairspray uh, um, dirties up the lens of my camera. So I'm just uh, spraying the bottle lightly all the way around with some of my favorite hairspray, which is uh, Aussie Mega, but any hairspray will do. And this is something that um, I did when I was in theater. If I wanted to dull down a mirror or any kind of glassware that appeared on stage, because stage lights hitting glass, um, the reflection is just enough to melt your eyeballs. So I'm going to back this up a little bit. This 
the stack of notepads that's been sitting on my uh, bench behind me for a while it's covered with a layer of real honest to god dust so before this dries completely I'm just gonna pat my hands in the actual dust and then pat it on my piece and this is great if you have uh, dusting to do in your house or if you want to just reach up up above your kitchen cabinets or up above on the top of a bookcase. I'm sad to say that I am never lacking for places to find dust. And the other thing that you can do is uh, get your hand dusty and then blow it into the hairspray. If you don't have real dust, you can do this with colored chalks. Um, mix up a little bit of gray with a little bit of tan and that'll work just fine. I'm also getting like whatever's on my hands in terms of oils or dirt or dead skin or whatever, which sounds completely disgusting. But what it does is it knocks the shine off this bottle a little bit and it makes it look like it's dirty and dusty and has been sitting around for a while. And that's the look that we want. So I'm gonna let that sit and dry and talk to you about what I've done here. So you remember this bottle, um, my nice shiny uh, vanilla extract bottle. Um, it's been aged and I tied it off with some jute. I grabbed a tiny tag and wrote on it and your writing doesn't have to be legible it says limpets but I'm pretty sure that nobody else would ever be able to read that also age the cork um, I'm going to talk about this one in a minute this is uh, again aged cork this uh, test tube was old and dirty already so I just never washed it and went ahead and worked with it with real dirt on it um, and I grabbed some masking tape and aged either side either edge of the masking tape and then once I tore it off I also I aged the torn edge and again wrote on it with pencil and then smeared my finger over it so that it um, creates sort of a lost and found look um, on this one I did my hairspray and dust thing, aged the cork, tore off a piece of old um, book page from uh, the margin of a, a page so that it was uh, blank paper, and um, aged the edge that I tore because it didn't match the natural aged edge of the paper, um, and then got some string and tied it around and I also aged the string by doing this I actually usually cut off a piece to do this but I'll just do it on the end of this just stick my finger on the ink pad and drag the string across it while I'm twirling it so that it doesn't age evenly and now I have aged string on one side and brand new string on the other. It looks very different. Um, so, and then um, the one thing I didn't do that I probably should have is once I cut off the ends to the correct length, I needed to age the ends because the cut ends are now white. So I'm just dragging my finger across the ink pad. And if that's not sufficient, this pad is a little dry just drag it across like that and your fingers get a little inky but that's okay this one is tied off just with a knot of raffia um, which I, I really like because it's a, a very natural look and then these two this is a string and another tiny tag and this one has nothing because nothing is an acceptable option. Not putting any decoration on it is fine. So this one um, I skipped over 
this is, it has a cork in it just like this test tube. And then I took a piece of beeswax and warmed it in my hand and smoothed it over the cork. And I'm going to go ahead and do another one of those in just a minute. But um, this is just waxed. Um, it looks totally different. It's kind of weird looking. Um, but it's just another option of how to uh, create a closure and um, make something look like it's old when really it's pretty new. So I have in my hand some beeswax. Let me get this out of the way. It's just a little blob. And I'm just going to work it back and forth with my fingers until it warms up a little bit. And if you need to, you can blast this with a, a blow dryer for a second. Don't use a heat gun. It will turn to liquid instantly. So now I'm just going to put this on my cork and as it gets thinner and I work it around the edges it also gets easier to move So I'm just continuing to smooth this down from the top, down the sides. Because what I really want is a thin layer of wax and not a big chunk of it. And I don't really have to do this all the way around. I only need to do it along the edge, the side of the bottle that I'm going to face outward, but I generally do do all the way around just because it looks good. And if I want this to be flat on top, I can press down like that and then move all the extra wax that down the side. That looks pretty good. It looks like something that's been sealed in wax rather than just another bottle with a cork in it from the craft store.
bit of a blow dry. I think this is done. I think I want to put something around the edge of it. Maybe some of I like this thick white twine, but it is very white. So gonna do my little aging thing here um, and this is just white cotton twine from the hardware store okay this needs to be aged a little bit and since it's next to wax I'm gonna use yellow this is um, amber clay chalk ink from Colorbox off way more than I need because I want to leave myself enough to comfortably tie a knot. And then anytime I cut an edge I untwirl it so that it looks a little bit ragged and not brand new. And I'm also going to drag some ink over my untwirled edges so that they don't look brand new. There. Now it really doesn't look like something you'd get at the craft store. And here are all my bottles finished. Um, I added a few things that aren't glass, just to break it up a little bit. Um, this is a spool from the craft store that I aged with some ink and wrapped some uh, red thread around. And a little roll of um, hemp twine uh, that I rolled up. And a tiny pine cone. Um, so this looks uh, quite a bit different from what I started out with. Um, everything looks a little bit older and it, it looks uh, like it's actually been used rather than um, straight out of the box. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is that um, you notice that some of these bottles aren't filled all the way to the top. Um, realistically, uh, if you opened a pantry full of glass bottles, you would see bottles filled at different heights because we use things at different rates. So that's always important to remember. Don't fill everything all the way to the top. Unless you're creating a story where everything is, every, everything is new and shiny. Uh, and then forget everything you learned in this video.